Welcome to ToddFun.com. I'm doing an update uh, to uh, the uh, Kenward uh, TS520S frequency counter uh, for that ham radio. Um, I used originally, you know, I was working using some of this information from another person's frequency counter that they'd shared online. I was using this video amplifier. I was using it in plus and minus configuration, unlike this person who was trying to get it to work um, from a zero to five volts, and that was not going to work with my signals. Um, and I was also uh, using the NAND gates here uh, for the cleanup before it went to, in this case it was an Arduino, uh, but uh, they were doing, this was just for general frequency counter, it wasn't specifically for radio. Then um, I had uh, altered the circuit by using the uh, data sheets and uh, as you know, if you, I'll put a show, links to the other uh, videos below uh, and at toddfun.com so you can get caught up. Uh, the only change I made to this video amplifier circuit, this 8-pin, it was I added a, a respearers diode here, um, and uh, it was a, a 1 and 4, 1, 4, 8, and it, and it really stabilized it at the higher frequencies even more. But I wasn't happy with this because it needed plus and minus 5 volts to really work. I couldn't, I tried to, I tried to use this individual's idea, but with my low signals, it just wasn't going to work, and my high frequencies on top of that. So I was really curious if, if I could do something where I didn't have to have a plus and minus 5 volts and I didn't have to have all the supporting um, um, components and resistors and capacitors and everything just to, just to get this thing partially stable. Um, not to mention it has to go into a NAND gate for cleanup. So then what I did is, is I originally had sourced this in video 1. If you go to the first blog post on toddfun.com, once again that will be in the show notes below for this video. Um, I referenced this person's uh, frequency counter. Um, I believe he calls it the, the DD, well, he calls it the DFD2-520. And it actually does this very job. It actually counts the frequencies for this very radio. Um, what I didn't like about it and why I wasn't really using it directly is because he uses a pick and his own proprietary coding. Um, and he has to use a 20 megahertz clock and he has to he has to calibrate the 20 megahertz clock in order to get the frequency counting correct and I don't need any of that because I'm not going to have that problem um, but they do do he does he does switch between the three inputs using uh, using this multiplexer which I am going to use but mine's going to be an Arduino here and because I'm going to be doing a divide by eight on this higher HFO I don't have to worry about uh, any of the frequency tuning or anything like that. I'll be perfectly fine using an Arduino. So, okay, this is all going to be different, granted, but what's nice about this is the front end. I like the front end on this one, um, but I, I, I originally bought the chips. I actually have the chips here. Um, we'll show you one in a second, but I didn't like the idea. That's why I went with the other individual's video amplifier, because when I reviewed these chips, they're the uh, 74HC4046. They're uh, uh, phase lock loop chips. Seems kind of clever, but when I reviewed how he was wiring them up on pin 14 and the output on pin 2, um, it did, really didn't uh, it didn't make any sense for what was inside the chip and how you're supposed to use the chip. This didn't make any sense to me. Maybe someone can explain why it makes sense, but to me, it, 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 it just he's using something inside the chip that's not the way it's designed to work is probably what it's coming down to. So I kind of ignored it. I threw it aside and said, nah, I'm not going to use that. But I said, you know, this doesn't look so complicated. I mean, got about the same input, so you know, an input resistor and uh, coupling capacitor. He's got a couple of um, of those same diodes that I'd used um, because he knows that this might spike higher than than the drop across or above or below these uh, the drop for these diodes. And that way, when when this signal on any of these kick high or low, it'll drain that off to ground instead of instead of messing up the uh, and having to reset this this whole mechanism. Um, and then a, another coupling capacitor, and then the phase lock loop. It's really simple connection, so it only needs plus and minus 5 volts, but will it work at low frequencies? Will it work at my high frequencies? Well, apparently it's working for him, including the input uh, uh, biasing. Um, is, he's got a, what he considers a, a strong input. Or, you know, it's, it's a buffered input on these chips, so you don't even have to worry about that. So that's nice. And he doesn't have to have any NAND gates. He's basically saying these come out clean enough logic to run right directly into in, into a, a micro, or in this case into a multiplexer before it goes into the micro. So I'm like, well, let me hook it up once, you know, what the heck, right? Well, I did. And 
that clever guy, it works so, so good, even though I don't see why that works the way that he's got it wired up, but it sure does. So over here, we've got it wired up. You can see it's much, much simpler. This is that phase lock loop. Uh, nothing much to it. Uh, uh, basically, a, I'm coming in with, with 5 volts on either side. It's not plus and minus. It's just straight 5 volts coming to pin 16 and pin 3. And then, and then ground coming into pin 8. The signal uh, comes into pin 3. Uh, the, the, you can kind of ignore this. This is a T-pad uh, attenuator because I'm using the high frequency source of this SWR analyzer and the output's too high uh, to mimic the radial. And so this, this attenuator circuit right here is just bringing it down to the exact same levels that I measured, measured from the back of the radio. So that small signal comes in here at uh, 30, uh, 38 uh, megahertz and then comes out um, on this red line which also comes up to the divide by 8 over to the Arduino. No need for a NAND gate because sure enough what comes out of here is more than clean enough uh, to continue on into the logic circuits of a micro. Um, without anything else. So we'll take a look at what's coming out. That's that's what's actually coming out of the phase lock loop and what's going in is the 28 uh, megahertz uh, 28.0101 and uh, this of course is doing a divide by 8 and going to the Arduino. The Arduino is doing a multiply by 8 and if we come over here we can see we're getting 38 megahertz, 0 0.00. In this case, it's just a hair under one, but this is doing a, a multiply by eight, so there's a tiny bit extra air in that. But here we go. Uh, that's going to be a much simpler uh, solution. It's working great at low frequencies and, I mean, at high frequencies and, and low amp amplitude as well as low frequencies, low amplitude. So it's just, and I tried to bang it up with noise, and I did all types of things to it, and it was stable all the time. It was just incredible. I, I don't, I don't get it, but hey, thumbs up to that individual. So, um, he, of course, he does make and sell this with his own pick thing. But okay, so what I need now is I need three of these, one for each of those inputs. One of these will go into the divide by eight. The other two will not. And they'll just be on the board over here. And then these two uh, can simply go directly into the multiplexer, and this will go into the multiplexer. The Arduino simply needs to multiplex which one it wants to count, do its math, and throw a display up. So, okay, well, that's going to be a completely different circuit. So I wanted to let you know that was what I, what I was in on with it, and uh, we, will, uh, we will update you when I get some more built. Thanks for joining.